Welcome to District Dialogues. My name is Marvin Arrington Jr., Fulton County Commissioner representing District 5. District 5 encompasses parts of the City of Atlanta, the City of South Fulton, East Point, Union City, and College Park. Some of the great landmarks in District 5 include Zoo Atlanta, the former Fort McPherson, which is now home to Tyler Perry Studio, the Porsche Headquarters, the Camp Creek Marketplace, and one of my favorites, the Wolf Creek Amphitheater. During this show, we hope to share information about organizations, initiatives, and resources in Fulton County and in District 5, and for areas that I champion. So let's get straight to it. I am a proud member of the Justice and Public Safety Committee for the National Association of Counties, also known as NACO. In our Justice and Public Safety segment, we like to share information from our partners uh, and other providers that provide resources and information about justice and public safety. Please meet Lee Reed, Executive Director with the Atlanta Citizens Review Board. Welcome to the show, Lee. Thank you, thank you for having me today. So tell us about the Atlanta Citizens Review Board and, and its background and why it was created. Okay, the Atlanta Citizens Review Board was created in 2007 after the death of Ms. Katherine Johnson. She was a 92-year-old community member that was killed by Atlanta uh, police officers. Um, the community was upset about the, the, the killing and the city council created this agency, independent agency, I should say, to investigate citizens' complaints. And so, what does the Atlanta Citizens Review Board do? How, how does it receive those complaints and what does it do to investigate the complaints and, and, and what happens after okay. the filing of a complaint? The way our process works, a citizen can contact our agency um, through mail, phone, email. Uh, once they contact us, we'll conduct an investigation that would include incl interviewing all, all participants in the, in the action, meaning the officers, witnesses, pulling all the records, any videos, any of that material that may be associated to that um, incident. And then once they've done that, it goes to a citizen board who would actually make the decision to say if the officer did something wrong or not. And I guess what are, what are the circumstances or why would someone Need, need to file a complaint? You know, it's, the Atlanta Citizen Review Board is like a checks and balances. We know we need police officers. We know we need to have the best police officers out there on the street. So if an officer is alleged to have violated one of our, uh, allegate, one of the allegations under our uh, authority, then we want the citizen to come in, file a complaint so that we can ensure that what the officer did was correctly, or if the officer did something that was wrong, he can be corrected or disciplined for it. And this doesn't take the place of internal affairs or anything like that, internal affairs investigation. No, this, does, this is like something other than in internal affairs investigation. You can file with internal affairs, you can file with the Atlanta Citizen Review Board, we conduct independent investigations, that go to the chief to decide if they want to discipline or not. Also, this doesn't replace if someone wants to file a lawsuit. This is strictly an agency that will conduct a fair and balanced investigation so that a citizen can still have trust in the city's efforts to hold officers accountable. What are some of the biggest challenges that, that you or that the Atlanta Citizens Review Board faces? Our biggest challenges are when we send something over to the police department, the police department may not respond the way that the board members uh, would like to see. Uh, so discipline is one of the biggest challenges that we face. And the other big challenge is community outreach, building awareness with the community so that uh, they know that we exist, so that they will participate in the process because the process is created for them. 
Um, so where exactly can a city of Atlanta resident or any person that may have need to file a complaint, where, where do they go to file that complaint? We're in City Hall, in the City Hall Tower, downtown Atlanta, um, Suite 9100 on the ninth floor. They can file during the week with our agency as a walk-in, or they can contact us at 404-865-8622, or they can contact our, go visit us on our website at acrbgov.org. Okay, and when and how often does your board meet? Our board meets the second Thursday of every month at 6.30 in City Hall in Community Room 2. Excuse me, Community Room 1. And we love to have the public come down, observe how the board operates, and just watch your government in action. Now, uh, we were talking earlier, is there a, a time frame in which uh, a citizen needs to file this complaint? Certainly. 180 days from the date of the incident. It's important that... We, we love for citizens to file the complaints immediately after the incident, but the farthest out you can go is 180 days. After that, we can't take the complaint. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for joining us today, Mr. Lee. Thank we, you. We appreciate all that you do in helping keep uh, Atlanta police officers accountable and helping Atlanta citizens maintain transparency uh, in government. Well, thank you, Mr. Arrington. We appreciate it. We appreciate all your work. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back with our D5 Spotlight. Stay with us. Welcome back. In our D5 Spotlight, we recognize organizations and individuals who are striving to empower our community and our county. Our next guest is Rick Ross, founder of the Music Education Group. Welcome to the show, Rick. Thanks for having me, Commissioner. Well, tell us, what inspired you to start the Music Education Group? Well, you know, I've been in the record industry for over 30-some years with work with artists from Anita Baker to T.I. to the Migos to Lil Yachty. But it's always been on the creative. You know, dealing with artists, you, you get to see the ins and outs of the business. So I said, you know what? I think I need to start an organization focusing on the business. Because every kid wants to rap, sing, produce. But I never hear talk, kids talking about they want to be in promotions and marketing. They want to be an attorney. They want to be a publicist. They want to be in publishing. So uh, about 16 years ago, I created the, uh, the Music Education Group. And what is the Music Education Group's motto? To empower you one note at a time. I, I, I think a lot of times, you know, when we're dealing with kids, we're always talking about this, this, this heavy influence or this heavy uh, uh, direction on education. But what people fail to realize that these kids, man, they really want, they want to be empowered. And you have to find things that, that will empower them. And the best way that I know was through music. I love it. One note at a time. One note at a time. And one, and one child at a time. One right? child at a time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, who is your target audience for the music education group? Uh, we work with kids from the ages of 10 all the way up to 19, female and male. And, and what are some of the programs or what are some of the activities that you do when working with these students? Well, one, one of our main programs is what we call the More to Music Initiative. And that's where we do an eight to 10 week program where we take the kids through the, through the 80s BCs of the industry from from A to Z they learn everything from what a performance right organization is to publishing copyright everything that's related to the business uh, we also have a master class where we take uh, industry professionals into the schools and talk to the kids about their profession with a with an emphasis on education you know sometimes it just takes ex exposure and seeing people and talking people to people right. that have been there and and walked the walk already yeah yeah 
Uh, so we thank you for your time with that. H how can people, if people want to join or volunteer with the Music Education Group, how can they do that? Uh, you can go on our website. The website is www.themeg.org or they can reach me at 678-523-0452. That's my personal cell. All right. Now, now you got it. Yeah. Um, tell us how your organization has grown through the years. And you said you started 16 years yeah. ago. And how, was, how does it? I was fortunate enough to bring in an executive director. So <laughs> that, that, that speaks volume right there. Because yes. I was so hands-on with, with the organization. It was my baby. I birthed it. So... Uh, I brought in a great guy. Uh, my executive director name is James Caldwell. He used to work for Home Depot. He's worked in the education field, so uh, great guy. Um, and then just the programming and the volunteers that we have. Uh, we have a lot of engineers, a lot of producers that we that we've started working with. So it's just it's, it continues to grow each and every day, man. We're getting calls about people saying they want to come in, they want to help, they want to volunteer, and they really want to pour back into these kids and into the community. Um, tell us how our audience can stay connected with the music education group. Through our website, uh, themeg.org. Uh, we're actually updating it. We, you know, we're still a small organization, but we do a lot. So uh, we, we're in the, in the process of revamping our website, making it more current. But you can also follow us on IG, uh, The Meg, uh, or Music Ed Group on IG and Facebook. Now, you give out like a thousand bikes a year to the kids. Yeah, is, that, yeah. is that another program or is that yeah, through that's, Meg? That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's through Meg. Uh, that's just a give back to the community. Uh, right now, I think we have given out probably over a thousand bikes in the last five years. And Taurus, we also you know partnered with Taurus for Tots, and they've been some supportive uh, local radio stations uh, here in the city. Uh, that we do bike drives every, you know, every December. And uh, that's just a give back to the community, just saying thank you and giving back some to the kids. Well, we thank you for all your hard work and all that you do for our youth and, and for our community and our county. Thank you. Thank you. Stay with us, everyone. We have a special guest in our art segment. We look forward to seeing you. <laughs> I'm the proud executive sponsor of Arts and Culture for Fulton County Government. I also serve on the Atlanta Fulton County Recreation Authority and the Arts Commission for the National Association of Counties, or NACO. In our arts segment, I like to highlight arts and culture organizations and programs in Fulton County. Today, please meet Van Jensen, publisher of Arts ATL. Welcome to the show, Van. Thanks for having me. Hey, well, it's good to see you again. Yeah, we had a great time together at the Luminary Awards earlier this year. We did. It was a spectacular event. I, I hope to uh, attend future events. It was a it was a really good time. Yeah, you know, we we had started that a few years back and and realized that there was this need for an event to celebrate the the arts community and to give out awards, and so it's built up and built up and. You know, I, I think we're starting to get to that kind of like Atlanta's Grammys feel, which is what we really want to create. Well, it was a great event and great location. Tell us more, um, what is the mission, the purpose, and the goal of Arts ATL? Yeah, so Arts ATL was founded a decade ago, and it was critics of the finer arts in Atlanta who, when the AJC pulled back from covering the arts, that they decided to continue their work on a new website. So that became Arts ATL, which became a nonprofit and now can be found at artsatl.org. So the idea generally is that artists need an audience, right? So for an audience to find art, there has to be some news source to, to connect them there. So I am part of this, I grew up in a small town, so I kind of think of it as if, if you take the arts community in the metro Atlanta area and you think of it as a small, you know, a small city, that this is like the small town newspaper for that group of people interested in the arts. Um, you know, I know they've done a great job. Of, I learned a lot about that at the Luminary Awards uh, of that history. Um, as you 
get ready to commemorate your 10 year anniversary. What are some of the accomplishments that you're most proud of over that period? Well, we've built up through our website to having an audience of uh, approaching half a million people per year. So that's that's been really great to see that traffic grow. And then of course, you know, we're a, a, a full digital publication. So that means building a social media presence. So we have a really active presence uh, through Instagram. And we, you know, just, uh, just recently we had a group of artists together for this artist advisory council that we've put together and it has the top artists in the city who are now involved with us in helping to, to build our operation. And just to see that the very top artists in the city are actively engaging with us and, and helping us to grow to kind of that next stage, it's I think a real sign of you know that we're starting to get to where we want to be. But ultimately it's all about directing people to engage with the arts. Well, the arts are so vital. Um, one of the things I like about the arts is it's a universal language, right? Like math. Absolutely. Uh, it's something that all people from all backgrounds and all cultures can enjoy. Uh, yeah, there's there's so much power to it. I mean, you can be you can be very um, you know purely capitalistic and just you know if even if you only care about money, I mean. Arts and culture is one of the biggest uh, financial boons to the state of Georgia, to the metro area, and it also has incredible impacts, exposure to art, to to children and their development. And there's plenty of you know there there are all the metrics that show how impactful art is, but it also I think everyone has their own story of how art emotionally impacts them, and I I know that I have mine and so many other people have shared theirs. And so that's, you know, that's what we always want to focus on is yes, there's a, you know, a purely analytical reason for art, but then ultimately it is just about something that enriches our experience. Right. So tell us about the, the impact that you believe Arts ATL has had uh, over the last 10 years. Well, over those years, we've, again, we've built up to where we've had millions of people over that period visit the site who've read tens of thousands of articles that highlight everyone from, you know, up and coming, small scale creators across all disciplines. You know, the, the smallest dance company gets coverage and there's no one else providing that coverage. And, and then we've seen through the way that artists connect with us that people are showing up at, at theatrical events, at opera events, at dance events, at, at uh, you know, art galleries who are saying that they came you know, from hearing about right. something on Arts ATL. So we're, we're very proud of that. And then we also, we do hard journalism. So when there are instances where something needs a, you know, a serious eye and needs to be investigated and someone needs to be accountable, you know, we, we dig into that as well. And I think that that's an important aspect of it that, you know, you, you have to have a good, strong, independent journalistic voice to, to always be, you know, looking to make sure that things are operating the way that they should. Well, you know, exposure is, is, is truly key in helping those artists get the word out about their events, about their artistic form uh, is certainly a worthwhile cause. What's the vision for Arts ATL over the next 10 years? Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're building into having essentially a bigger kind of brand engagement, with, which is the, the very, you know, uh, inside baseball term that you use. But really, we want to build Arts ATL into a kind of banner identity that if you're into the arts in Atlanta, that you know, you'll, you'll have an Arts ATL sticker on your laptop that, you know, we have hats and shirts and that you engage with us through, we now have a calendar that comprehensively covers arts events in Atlanta. So you can find things through this calendar and so that it really is this, this kind of uh, group that if, you know, if you're into the arts in Atlanta, that you're part of this community and that it really, I mean, for me, it's all about tying people together. Yes, definitely. Uh, unity is a is a great way to go for all people, uh, particularly when you're talking about the arts. Uh, like you said, it brings together people of all different backgrounds and uh, diversity. Um, how can Fulton County residents find out more information about Arts ATL and connect with you and your staff? 
So the easiest thing, www.artsatl.org is the website. You can find us uh, at Arts Atlanta on Instagram is a place where a lot of people are connecting with us and we do a lot of fun things there. Um, anyone who wants to get, and, and we really, I stress that we want every arts entity, every artist to feel like they can connect with us, that if you, know, if you have an event, we want it on our calendar. So you can email us info at artsatl.org or you can email me directly, van, V-A-N, just like the vehicle, at artsatl.org. Awesome, well, thank you so much for all your work that you're doing in promoting the arts uh, throughout Atlanta, Fulton County and the, the region. And uh, Fulton County will all continue to be there to support uh, those efforts. Thank you so much. Uh, when we come back, our Did You Know segment. Stay with us. As we close out today's show, we would like to provide information about Fulton County Services in our Did You Know segment. Please meet Dwayne Pinckney Deputy Chief Appraiser with the Fulton County Board of Assessors Office as he shares information about filing an appeal. When you receive your annual Fulton County Notice of Assessment, you have 45 days from the date of that notice if you disagree with the current year fair market value and you can file an appeal within 45 days. Filing an appeal can be done online, in our office, or through the mail. We prefer that you do the appeals online, therefore the appeals will be more efficient, speedy, and it's a secure process. On our website, choose the online filing services, and then create an account in SmartFile. Once you create an account in SmartFile, you can enter your information, and file the appeal securely online. You can also get more information about appeals on our website, which is www.fultonassessor.org. That's www.fultonassessor.org. Or you can call our customer service representative at 404-612-6440. As we wrap up today's show, I'd like to invite you to stay connected with my office. You can reach us by phone, email, website, and through our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching District Dialogues. I'll see you next time.